Howdy gamers, let's talk about the runes for Set, released about two days ago, and I'm sure later in the season uh, I'll come back and have an updated view on what to run on him and what not to, but the common thing I see is Conqueror, and I, this page like as actually isn't that valuable. Um, with Conqueror it's going to give you more AD and then healing once fully stacked, but the healing isn't really necessary for his kit, as it's more about how much damage you can take and not so much how much damage you can deal, and with Conqueror, um, a common misconception with it is like you actually have to be dealing significant amounts of damage um, to actually get good value out of the healing or else it's not so crazy. Um, Triumph is good, Legend Tenacity is okay, um, even Attack Speed or Lifesteal, they're, they're all okay, but they're not like crazy wildly like effective for them. And then Last Stand is also okay. Um, the keystone that I'm going to recommend is Grasp the Undying for the top lane. With Grasp the Undying, Christ, with Grasp of the Undying, every 4 seconds in combat, your next basic attack will deal bonus magic damage equal to 4% of your maximum health, and then heal you for 2% of your maximum health, and then permanently increase your health by 5. This gives you like actual, an actual laning tool um, in the top lane. You can combo this pretty well with your right punch, so you want out of the minions, you build up Grasp, and then you just walk up to the enemy with the Q active, and then you, even just the bare minimum, one auto right punch with the grass proc is going to be a significant trade versus not versus like that giving you one stack of conquer and then the trades just dissipated and then anything else after that is going to be good um, if the trades extended so let's say you approach with a two autos with the q and then you land the e and then you get another grass proc then it's even better since you're going to be approaching the enemy and usually trading into the minion wave, you're also going to be offsetting the damage that you're taking from the minions with the Grasp of the Undying proc. Since the healing's not that crazy, it's going to heal you about 20 to 30 early in the game, then its only, use, it's only function is basically for that. And then it's also going to be comboed with a lot of other healing through either Second Wind or through Doran Shield or even through Lifesteal. So um, not having huge values... Not having huge healing values from the rune alone isn't so bad. Um, it also kind of has the solo queue buff where it permanently increases your health by 5. So come mid game, I would I would suspect most uh, most set players are going to be done with the landing phase and just simply walking around the map and fighting everything possible. And in that case, you are going to be getting better value out of Grasp of the Undying as you're going to be permanently increasing the health over and over and over again with every single proc, which in a team fight, you could get 4 or 5 procs off. Second rune is going to be Demolish. You charge up a powerful attack against a tower. I'm sure most people know how to Demolish works, but um, giving you the extra damage to towers is effectively going to give you um, a turret plating whenever you end up killing your lane. Um, and then it gives you a turret plate at a timing in which you can take the one turret plate and then reset back to top lane without having to miss a minion wave. So, I mean, missing a minion wave is... If you miss the minion wave, then why even get the turret plate? Um, on, like, early timings when you can kill your lane. Since it has the 35% maximum health scaling damage, um, it actually scales with your natural build as well. So come mid game, um, since you're building all health items, it's going to give you about 700 damage to towers. And then come late game, it's going to give you like 1,000 damage to towers. And again, it's kind of like this good solo queue luxury, which if you're winning team fights, then you get to get a tower on top of that, or it helps you get a tower on top of that. If you're naturally winning and you're just barreling down a side lane, it's going to let you take those towers faster. Um, in the closest situations where you're sieging, then it's also going to help you there. So it's pretty solid and kind of like an offensive luxury tool, but it's fine since Set has so much in his kit already. He's not missing out on a lot from other runes. With Shield Bash, um, you could get value out of this with his W, but... It's just not so not so useful. The damage on it is like almost negligible, and the stats also offered are almost as negligible. You want to think about champions that have like tons of shields that they can um, either cast or use like throughout multiple fights. That those are the champions that really make better use out of shield bash. For the third rune, you have the good option of second wind or bone plating. Bone plating is going to be better into the melee matchups, so or mostly the bruiser matchup top lane. So champions like Irelia, Fiora, uh, etc where whenever they have to engage onto you, you're effectively just going to have more health. With Bone Plating, after you take damage from an enemy champion, the next three spells or attacks you receive from them, deal 30 to 60, that's based on your level, less damage. And then this is on a 45 second cooldown. So in every single melee matchup, this effectively just gives you more health, which is so crazy. So they can get the jump onto you. You're going to be building up the Grass proc because you have to wait four seconds, but you're going to be blocking damage from them. Once they finally break through Bone Plating, 
the damage that they dealt is going to be healed a bit by grasp and then you're going to be working towards your second grasp proc on top of all the other damage that you're going to be dealing so bone plating wildly useful into into those lanes and into those lanes as well like usually if they're not killing their lane they're usually naturally losing with second wind uh, you want to be running this into the caster matchup top lane so think about champions like mordekaiser orn rumble where even though they're melee champions they still have um, a medium to long range poke ability so mordekaiser's q orn's wq rumble's eq um, even champions like Aatrox, where he's primarily just his Q cooldown early game, and even later into later into the game in top lane. So in matchups like that, second wind has no cooldown, so you're going to be matching um, you're going to be matching their poke ability cooldown with second wind. And with second wind, after you take damage from an enemy champion, you heal for four percent of your missing health plus six over ten seconds. So come the time that you're team fighting as well, this has pretty good synergy with sets kit because you're building primarily health items you want to get to below around below like 30 percent of your hp and then the more health that you're missing the more health you're regening so since you get a big shield in a team fight it's like the healing from this can also be pretty impactful in team fights so it's a really really strong rune and both of these are just really really effective on set and if you're you're looking if you're just looking for a default to run go with bone plating for the fourth rune um it's going to be overgrowth over like maybe below Cho'Gath, Set's probably one of the best users of Overgrowth like in the entire game. With Overgrowth, you absorb life essence for monsters or enemy minions, mostly just enemy minions that die near you, permanently increasing your maximum health by three for every eight. When you've absorbed 120 monsters or enemy minions, mostly enemy minions, you gain an additional 3.5% maximum health. Like it's so so crazy. Most champions, this is giving you like about a ruby crystal. With Set, you can get like 300 bonus health with just this rune. And this, in combination with Grasp, is going to give you, like, the freest health scaling just out of nowhere. Kind of the same with Bone Plating. You just get so much effective health from these three runes, it's insane. And then with Demolish, you're effectively getting health as well, as the gold you're earning from Demolish is going to go into health items. The synergy is so crazy. And with Set, I really think it's just about how much damage you can take, not so much amplifying the damage you can deal. If you're already winning and you want to amplify the damage you can deal, you do that better through itemization than you could do through runes such as Conqueror. So yeah, for second runes, it's going to be Triumph and Last Stand. Um, with Triumph, you restore 12% of your missing health, and um, kills and assists grant you additional 20 gold. Or you restore 12% of your missing health whenever you get a kill or assist. Again, it has pretty high synergy, as your health is your main resource on set and most tanks in the top lane. Um, so in 1v1 situations, it's going to help you if it goes to the wire. If you're diving champions, it's going to help you because um, he has a really good dive with the ult. And then in, in 1v2s, it's going to help you. In 2v2s, it's going to help you. Basically, every single, anytime you're fighting a champion, it's going to end up helping you. And in, in team fights, especially um, in 5v5s, you're probably going to have to spend your health early to approach the enemy. And then once you're on top of them, you especially need like as much durability as you can get and you finish off one target restores 12 percent of your missing health that in combination with second wind or bone plating or just your maximum health in general is just has very very natural synergy with like how the champion wants to play out with last stand you deal 5 to 11 percent increased damage on champions who are below 60 percent health or shit you deal 5 to 11 percent increased damage to champions while you're below 60 percent health um, and then the maximum is gained at 30 percent this again has very natural synergy with set's kit set doesn't mind if he's going below 60 percent health and especially he, he's even safe at 30 percent health because of the way his w works um you build up so much grit and then when you spin that then you get this big ass shield and then as that's active then it lets you deal more damage um and that's like your main burst once you're on top of champions just having a percentage increase on the damage is like all you need from the runes Last Stand would probably give you more damage than the Conqueror would throughout an entire game. So having this as a secondary rune, and then where you can get so much value out of it, is just crazy. And then it adds to it adds to the value of being more durable and staying alive longer in fights, even if you're at low HP values. Fantastic rune. For the adaptive runes, um, I'm going to recommend 10% attack speed, and then you actually don't need this adaptive force for the second 
um, the second choice. This is going to give you six, six attack damage, and again, it's more about how much damage you can take, especially early game on a top, top lane tank. So if you have a melee matchup, champions like Darius, Fiora, Irelia, etc., um, I think going double armor is completely fine, as you just have like this unfair amount of armor that early in the game. Um, a ch the only champion that could achieve this, like or close to this, was Tom Kinch um, back in the day. And then if you're playing into like mixed damage champions, it becomes even more valuable. So champions like Orn, um, where he can deal physical and magic damage, you could just run armor and magic resist. Now, if you're into a matchup where you could get away with it or where it's like less interactive, you could run the defensive stat depending on the champion you're into. So again, Fiora, Irelia, cha melee champion or physical damage champions, you obviously want the armor and then with AP champions, champions like Rumble and whatnot, you could run the Magic Resist, but then you could run the Scaling Health in the third row, as the Scaling Health is, again, just going to give you more HP for free. And that's kind of the theme of the entire rune page, where just getting all this durability just off the runes, not even um, through itemization, is so insane. And then if you put the itemization on top of it, um, gives you more durability and then through more durability you're going to get more rotations of your Q off and then ine inevitably more damage off the W. So uh, these would be the default runes I'd recommend for set top lane. Now let's talk about jungle and then after jungle I'm going to go into like why I think you shouldn't run other runes on set but I don't want this video to be like wildly long. So if you're going to play in jungle I think your best bet is to is is to like all in um the early part so i'm gonna recommend predator cheap shot zombie ward relentless hunter and then with sorcery secondary with nimbus cloak celerity and then uh attack speed with adaptive force and armor since you're playing in the jungle you're actually going to be able to get value out of the bonus ad early because you're just simply hitting the jungle camps more often therefore getting more value there um and since you're in the jungle as well you don't have to worry about tanking as much damage as you're either going to be healing it or it's just the jungle camps aren't going to kill you so long that you're not full clearing um on the first rotation so with predator and then nimbus cloak and celerity and relentless hunter it effectively makes it where you can be this nuisance that's constantly moving around the map and then able to fight anything at any stage so you can contest scuttle crab you can gank lanes um etc with this as well you also have the option to do three camps into recall into getting predator and ganking a side lane and then taking scuttle crab that's a pretty solid path versus having to like do three camps and then looking for a gank um because you offset like the early hp deficit that you would take if you're trying to full clear on set early with this room page um but and then just having predator and being able to move behind lanes or be in positions to respond to fights like almost immediately because like you really really are fast with boots predator relentless hunter and celerity it, you really start fucking like booking it and then you could even build blue smite with berserker greaves into cinder hulk with this um as you would just primarily be looking to gank and then once you're there you'd be dealing more damage because of the attack speed from the berserker greaves and the berserker greaves helps you clear after you look for ganks so if you're playing set jungle you might as well um, play for the ganks versus um, playing to full clear, as there's just champions that do that better, such as Karthus, Kha'Zix, etc. At a higher MMR, though, um, I think running Summoner Spellbook is completely fine, as if you're going to full clear, might as well um, get better value out of it. And if you're running Summoner Spellbook, um, you could run Cheap Shot, Relentless Hunter, or you could run Bone Plating, Overgrowth. I think. Um, Cheap Shot Relentless Hunter is going to give you a bit more value as you can still move around the map pretty um, reliably with Relentless Hunter. And then Cheap Shot's just going to give you more damage with your Blue Smite, um, with the red buff, and then with this kit in general. So at a higher MMR, this would this page would probably give you more value again. I don't I don't know like if it would be perfect as set was released like literally yesterday, but that's my thoughts on it. So back to the Conqueror page. Um, again, I kind of glanced over it at the start, but to go like just briefly more in depth with Conqueror, you're going to be building it up and then 
to build up the extra AD, the extra AD offered is is okay. You're gonna get more damage on your auto attacks. Um, you're gonna give slight, like slightly more damage to the Q, and then you're gonna give slightly more damage to the W, the E, and the ult once it's fully stacked. That's all fine. But to make use of the healing, you might be healing like 20 to 30 um, per auto attack or ability, which is okay, but if you're the tank champion too, you might be spending your HP for your allies to deal damage as well. So it's also anti-synergistic in that sense where you're trying to like put the carry potential on a tank champion that is better off trying to carry through having more HP for himself and for his team. With Triumph, it's a fine rune. I wouldn't change anything there. With the attack speed... It's kind of like a win more rune where you don't need it, and then if you have it, it's nice, but it's not it's not like outweighing the resolve page. With the lifesteal, it's good too. You're you are gonna heal off the autos, and then if you go double Doran's blades into like Tiamat into his natural build, then sure, um the lifesteal would be giving you okay value early. And then it might help you in 1v1 situations, um, especially in extended all ins and in combination with Conqueror. But does that outweigh like all the free health scaling you would get, um, the trading potential you would have with Grasp early? I think it might outweigh it. If you're a worse player, walking past the minion wave into the enemy champion, maybe it would outweigh it there. But it's like compensating a bad play versus um, putting you on the right path and then rewarding you for playing the game properly and yeah, playing the game properly and um, playing the game properly. And then the last room would still be last stand, and last stand would probably be giving you more damage than conquer in, in a lot of cases. And then the secondary runes would be the exact same as resolve, and then the six AD I suppose would give you more value if you're already running the extra AD from conquer. The benefit that conquer does have um, is that it gets you to per 100 values a lot faster. Um, Set has a per 100 value on his Q and his W, giving you more damage on them if you have. Um, 100, around 100 AD, and then Conqueror is going to get you to that value a lot faster with one item than you would have it with um, Resolve. But then again, you don't need that damage um, that early, it, probably. I'm not for sure, but I'm pretty sure you don't need that damage early. And then having the durability is going to give you more damage over time than having like the burst damage on Conqueror with the per 100 on his Q. So like, there's probably situations with Conqueror. Um, especially if you have an item advantage. And again, if you're already winning, then all that just doesn't matter anyways. But if you are already winning, then you have the situations where it's like you're just going to just fucking one-shot someone and be like, dude, that was cool. But once you retire MMRs, this shit just doesn't work out, probably. So that's my thoughts on set runes. Um, it's not set in stone. Again, I'll probably come back to um, update a couple of things once I've seen how he's played and it's I have some more knowledge on it past two days of just kind of seen and thinking about the champion. So if this video helped you, leaving a like on the video helps me. And um, if you're interested in just me talking about League of Legends more, you can check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash sorry Nelson. I'll probably be talking about uh, some things related to support or whatever, whatever's on my mind. So bye bye. I hope this video helped you. Set kind of looks like a noob champion. I'm going to be honest. He really looks like Udir, but like a little updated already. Bye bye. See you later.